behind the story. Thanks for joining us. I'm Amanda Hara. This is Marissa Sulik. She's one of our reporters. You've probably seen her on the air a lot recently, especially as she's been covering this effort in the legislature to push a bill through that would allow teachers and other school workers to be armed on campus and inside of classrooms. And this is uh, one of those stories that we've just been following day after day after day. Yeah. The big question now, Marissa, is what comes next? Because it's kind of stalled after a lot of action. Correct. Yeah, so we saw it pass the Senate, which caused a lot of chaos. However, now it's being held on the desk in the House. And that means it's just kind of like sitting there waiting. There will need to be a proper motion from the sponsor of the bill in the House before it is actually put back on the calendar. So there will be some notice. However, it's hard to tell when I ask the sponsor of the bill myself what exactly or when exactly we might see this come on the House floor. He said it would probably be either this week or next week, which is all they really have left right. because ses session is now winding down and it's expected to wind down come Wednesday or Thursday next week. All right, let's talk about some of the key players in this because we've got people, you know, on both sides of the issue who have become really vocal and yeah. really public about their thoughts. And of course, a lot of you have probably been watching some of the mothers from the Covenant School who had children who survived the attack uh, that happened more than a year ago. And they've been very vocal against this bill. We've Correct. also heard from people who do training for people in these kind of situations. And they say, you know what, this is a good idea. So mm -hmm. talk about the voices that are growing louder. Sure, yeah, you're hearing a lot of opposition, obviously, from moms like the Covenant Moms. And they're the ones who are concerned because, I mean, their kids did survive a school shooting. And they said the only reason they survived is because the teacher made sure that their kids were quiet. They made sure that they were in a corner or a closet and the shooter did not know where they were. So they want to make sure that teachers are with kids should an intruder come into their building. They want to make sure that the teachers are not going after these intruders, that again, they're keeping their kids calm and okay. Because I mean, if a, to their point, if an intruder were to come in the building and they go after it, who's going to be with the kids? Who's going to make sure the doors are locked, the shades are down, the lights are off. And a lot of these schools, you still have pre-K kindergarten kids who don't they can't do that themselves. So that is their point. However, you do have the other side of it who say that this is essential, especially for SROs and in rural counties. Right now, a lot of those rural counties, they cannot get a qualified SRO. So this would help them hire up a staff member to be armed. Let's backtrack for just a second. And two of the mothers that we've heard a lot from and seen a lot of is Melissa Alexander and Mary Joyce. And so they're the two mothers who had children in the Covenant School who survived the shooting. Mm -hmm. and. They described, you know, within the last few days here, just how close their students came to being face to face with that shooter. Take a listen to their experience and how they think that relates to this bill. We understand where they are coming from. We're just hoping, as Rick said, that we can meet in the middle and find a middle of the road solution for this. If this bill passes, our children will be left to fend for themselves in an active shooter emergency, some as young as pre-K. I urge you to contact your state house representative and there was a, another moment in some of the conversation that we heard from them where they said, you know, our kids saw the shooter, the shooter's feet walking mm -hmm. by and the teacher in that instance did everything within their power to focus on keeping the kids quiet and, you know, discreet. Mm -hmm. um, and so their concern was, well, what if what if the teacher had aborted that mission to go after the person with the gun. But then Correct. we're also hearing from a nonprofit that does a lot of training for active shooter situations. And they're saying, you know, we should really consider this bill. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You do have that other side of it. But for the most part, I keep hearing from moms who are the ones who are mostly at the Capitol. And they're the ones who are saying that, I mean, for years, we've, all, we've I've done active shooter drills. A lot of people have, and that's all you've been taught is to be quiet and in a dark room. So this would completely, this could change some things for some schools. They might have to figure out a new plan or, and a lot of the other part that some parents are concerned about is they would not know if their child's teacher has a gun. And teachers in the school would also not know if like their teacher next door has a gun or not the yeah. only people who would know is the director of schools the principal and maybe an SRO on campus and also law enforcement let's hear really quickly from from that expert that does a lot of this active shooter training about why he thinks that arming teachers and other staff members in schools is a good step forward 
We see certain staff that go willingly stand between somebody with a rifle and give up the last few seconds of their lives to buy these kids a few more minutes of life. Does it replace school resource officers or EMTs or police officers? It simply allows schools and the staff that choose to to have the ability to immediately respond to this violence. Waiting on the outside help to get there is too long in these situations. You've got to cut that timeline down as small as possible to save as many lives as absolutely possible. So I think a big question with this too is liability, right? Yeah. And so last week you kind of looked into that and this is not the first time that um, officials or school systems have considered the idea to arm teachers and staff members in mm -hmm. schools. Uh, so walk us through what you found out about a mid-state county and yeah. the issues that they ran into trying to do this years ago. So yeah, they passed this bill in 2016 that would only allow Wayne and Pickett counties to have their teachers be armed. And at first, like they, they did this because this was a concern that the superintendent brought to lawmakers saying like, we need this, we don't have SROs, this would be great. And they ended up passing the bill, it became law, but they couldn't implement it because they actually couldn't get the liability, they couldn't get insurance, they, the sheriff didn't want to figure out the training for all of it. So they ended up actually not even going with it in the end. So I talked to the lawmaker at the time who was still a lawmaker now, Senator Hensley, and I was like, wasn't this a waste of your time? He's like, in a way, yes, but also, I mean, this is the concern that was brought to him. So he felt like he had to get that bill passed. Mm -hmm. But this is a thing that we've seen in other states too. Iowa, for example, they passed a similar bill, but they couldn't get, their insurance to cover the schools after all this happened. So we've seen this pass in other states and it's just another concern should this pass here. Well, and the liability issue, I think it's a big question mark for a lot of people. And especially when, when you look at the, the current bill in its form now, mm -hmm. it uh, does not provide um, any sort of coverage, I guess, for the independent teacher. So the teacher, if right. they fire their weapon in a school sitting, setting, they would be held liable. Correct. And the provision states that schools wouldn't, but it's unclear if insurance companies would see it that way. Exactly. And it's hard to tell because, I mean, different insurance companies cover different school districts, all of that. So it's really hard to tell if they would even consider it. And because it's still pending legislation, a lot of people don't want to comment on it yet. Um, but yeah, currently in the legislation, it says only teachers would be liable. However, the only reason they'd be able to carry a gun is if the school district or the school would allow them to. So some lawyers I've talked to have said that there's a loophole here. Technically, others like the school district could be liable, but still according to legislation, it would just be the teacher. Well, and that's an, another interesting point because I think, you know, we hear about this bill and you don't look at all the fine print and you think, oh, just anyone mm -hmm. would be able to, to carry inside of the school. And it sounds like that's not necessarily the point that there right. would be a vetting process. So, you know, there would be um, a collaboration between local law enforcement mm -hmm. and the school to decide who actually gets that privilege or right. Right, correct. And a lot of Republicans say that there's going to be far and few between who actually want to do this. There's, there's not going to be so many teachers that are coming forward that are like, I want to carry a gun. They say it's only going to be a few, maybe across the state. And they have to go through 40 hours of training each year. Um, they have to get a background check, a psychological evaluation, and they also have to get that approval of like the superintendent, the principal, and their law enforcement. So it, it, they say it's not easy for them to actually get become armed with a concealed carry. So it should, they're putting those barriers in place. Uh, Marissa is our um, political reporter. And so she spends a lot of time on the Hill um, in the legislature and kind of watching all of these debates unfold. And this has been incredibly emotional. I mean, yeah. if you could convey to people who are watching or listening to this right now, how would you describe some of those moments that you've seen unravel? I know you've got video yeah. too of some of this unfolding. Oh, it's absolutely tense. And last week we actually saw a lot of moms and parents come to the Senate last week where they were trying to pass this. And we saw covenant moms there. We saw a lot of people up in that gallery right there. And because they were so vocal a few times and Lieutenant Governor McNally, you see there, he was telling them, hey, watch out. Like, if you do this one more time, I'm going to excuse you all. And they end up just going into an outburst after this one of the Senate sponsors of this bill said something. And then they were told to leave the gallery, which took 30 minutes. And then eventually they came back in and there was some opposition from Democratic lawmakers, but they ended up passing it of course, in the end. But it was it was chaotic, it was tense, it was emotional. These, these are covenant moms who were pleading to stay inside the gallery at the time 
because they just want to make sure that they see this bill all the way through. They say they've worked so hard. They've talked with lawmakers. They've had so many conversations that they wanted to be there for this. Yeah, just tough because uh, there really are so many mothers from different walks of life who yeah. have kind of collaborated and come together and then they were allowed to stay and other mothers were not because of, I guess, a difference in, you know, right. conduct, I guess you That's could say. That's how they kind of looked at it. Yeah. But in the end, the Covenant moms ended up leaving, too, because they realized mm -hmm. if other moms can't stay, why should I be able to? So it's cool to kind of see that. Well, let's talk about where we go from here, right? Because mm -hmm. it felt like there was action, 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 action. And then now we're kind of in this question mark period. You know, yeah. we talked to the governor and said, OK, look, wait a second. If this comes to your desk, what are the chances that you do sign off on it? And um, he shared his perspective with us said that I'm open to that idea. It's very important what the details of that legislation would look like. The particulars are important, and until I see those particulars, I can't comment on this. All right, so um, very noncommittal there, uh, not yes. getting a really good idea of what he plans to do. He's saying he wants to see it in its final form before he makes any decision. What are you going to be doing to keep all of us aware as this moves forward? Well, we'll be monitoring the House floor sessions. Of course, like I said before, they have to put a motion forward before this bill would be heard on the House floor as well. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. We will know it. They shouldn't actually do this like under the table or slide this out and just pass this last minute. They don't do that too often. It would have to be a really serious. I mean, not that this isn't serious, but it would have to be a certain kind of piece of legislation. And this is not that for them to do it. All right, Marissa Sulik uh, sharing some perspective on behind the story as this effort to arm teachers and staff members in schools plays out. We're going to keep you posted as the story develops in the WSMV4 News app and on air. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.